As a physics teacher, I use lots of simulation and hands-on experiment to help my students understand physics topic such as electricity. As a part of AMS Research Action Project, recently I have developed a hypothesis, simulation is better than hands-on experiment. I have collected lots of data through a series of interviews. Let's take a look. Uh, I support um, hands-on experiments more because um, to begin with, it's more, you can apply it to a lot more things. Um, I think I support the simulation better because although it's fixed and you don't really learn anything from it, but when you, um, I think you, I think you just get the overall idea using the simulation, so you know what you're supposed to be finding. I chose hands-on because I feel like I like touching and making sure I know what I'm doing first before I go on the computer and do the same thing. And then I'm Jared. Uh, I think hands-on is better because unlike simulations, hands-on actually will make you do more work and like the experiments can be more exciting than looking at a screen, like seeing it in front of you rather than at the screen. My name is Eric and I prefer hands-on experiments because I believe when you use simulations, they cause more of a isolation when you're trying to learn with physics. However, with hands-on, you can form groups and allow each other to combine all your known knowledge to solve problems Ooh, together. An answer. After conducting a series of interviews, we seem to have reached a consensus that simulation is for understanding and hands-on experiment is collect to the empirical data. Simulations for data, hands-on experiments for um, the experience of I, I like that. Simulation for understanding and mm -hmm. hands-on experiment for data. Yeah. Put it other way around. Simulation for understanding. I, I really like that. What about you? Sim simulation for understanding the natural phenomena. Once you have full understanding, then you do experiment to, to for what? For empirical data. For empirical data. Um, however, we still wanted to reach out scientist uh, Dr. Daniel Kavat for uh, for his opinion. I think when you're when you're starting out, some hands-on experience is good. I think especially with something like electricity that uh, isn't so familiar to people in everyday life, everybody has the experience of throwing a ball or pushing on something and watching it. But in, in everyday life, people don't have so much experience with electricity. So I think giving them some tangible hands on experience is good. Yeah. Oh, you want to just attach it? Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. so now this. <coughs> Where's the nails? You have to figure that out the way it's not lining up. Maybe it's this way. Hello, I'm Steven and Today, I will be using the simulation to create a series circuit that will light up one bulb. Um, first, I got a couple of wires, and I'm using a rectangular shape 
we will be using wires and I'm going to make a rectangular shape because when making circuits it's conventional to use a rectangular shape and in the middle of these wires we call this uh, a junction middle of the two wires we call the space the junction then we insert a battery inside the circuit but then we get a short circuit um, this is because there is no resistance inside of the circuit yet to suck up the power so we have to add a bulb and then this problem will be fixed connect it and boom it's lit there's a current using this ammeter that measures the amps right here we're going to split the junction creating an opening so i'm able to place the ammeter in between. The reading that we have is 0 0.90 amps to measure the voltage. Um, we have 8.9999. When I do the hands-on experiments, we have to use um, the real-life materials. Um, for example, a, a bulb like this, a LED bulb, Um, a wire like this, um, alligator clip, and a voltmeter and an ammeter, just like this, um, together in one. Since I was able to do the simulated series circuit successfully, I'm not confident that I would be able to do the hands-on lemon battery experiment. I'm going to teach you how to make a lemon battery. Um, we will be using six items. Um, one, a lemon, which has, this is the source of um, the electrolytes, the lemon acid inside of the lemon. Two, um, a nail, a galvanized nail. This has zinc, which we will need to make a anode. Uh, copper wire. We will be using this as a cathode. We need the copper. Uh, LED bulb, alligator clips, and a voltmeter to measure the voltage of the setup. Um, I'm going to make two terminals. Um, one is the anode using the zinc. Insert it to the lemon. And the second, the cathode with the copper wire wrapped around so that there's a Connection. It can't be this slim, but it has to be. Enough copper. These two are neutral. This has the atomic number 30. This one 29. Um, we used these items because they're easily accessible. Are neutral. This has the atomic number 30. This one has the atomic number 29. 30 protons, 29. It and it reacts with the electrolytes. It, the zinc likes to give up electrons and the copper wire likes to receive electrons. But this can't happen unless you make a bridge using the alligator clips like this and to do that this becomes a cation which is positive and this becomes a anion 
which is negative. And now I'm going to use five lemons to make a series circuit and measure the voltage. The negative of this battery would connect to the positive of the second battery. Make sure that you do that. And then all you'd have to do is connect the negative with the voltmeter. Let's see what the reading says. It's 15. 15. So with two lemons, you would have 15 divided by 10, which is 1.5 volts. Well, using the information and the direct relationship, we can infer that using five, it would take approximately three volts. And now I'm going to attach all five and light up the LED. This LED requires two volts to um, power it, two volts. Go positive. Yeah. Negative. Let me organize. Positive connected with the negative. Positive connected on this side with the negative of the fourth batter. Positive of the fourth batter. Is connected with the oh, sorry with the negative of the fifth now using the last alligator clue can it be positive of this one, the negative of the first, the fifth, positive of the fifth, negative of the first. The short side on the LED is the positive and the long side is the negative. So, positive to positive. Try not to put like charges together because the like charges would repel positive and positive or negative and negative um you'd have to put it opposite because opposites are try okay um short side positive positive of the fifth connected to the long side negative negative of the first Now you can see that the LED light is lit. As you can see, um, the LED bulb is lit. Um, this is because I used the chemistry to make the five batteries and I used the physics to create a series circuit from the batteries to light up this LED bulb. In other words, to explain the chemistry of the lemon battery.